Hey everyone, today we've got a new video on the Dodge Challenger. I used to do rare Challenger and Charger videos covering some of the models that had a limited production run. With the Challenger ending production at the end of 2023, I thought it'd be cool to take a look back at the 10 rarest or most limited or least produced Dodge Challengers that exist. There's actually 12 on my list today because it was hard to narrow it down to just 10, so that's a bit of a bonus. We will go from most produced to least produced. All MSRPs are in US dollars, but the production numbers are total worldwide unless otherwise specified. I will also list some honorable mentions at the end of the video that name some challengers that just missed out. There need to be some rules for a video like this because you can divide models up in different ways. So first I'm limiting this to production versions that were sold to customers from dealers. Some examples excluded would be the Hellcat X or auctions like the 2015 Hellcat VIN No. 1 in the Viper exclusive Striker Red paint. Also, I didn't include packages that can be added onto a regular model, like a TA for example, because these are not limited and anyone can order them in any given year for the extra cost, and they will make however many are ordered. So now, on to the list. We will open the list with the 2010 Mopar 10 Challenger. Each year since 2010, they have produced a limited edition, factory produced Mopar modified vehicle. This was the first one, based on the Challenger RT, and there were just 601 of them built in total, with 500 going to the US and the rest to Canada, all finished in brilliant black. The price tag was around 38000 for a car with the 5-speed automatic, and 39000 for the 6-speed manual. So the Mopar 10 was sandwiched between the RT at $31,610, and the SRT which was up at $43,680. All the cars were black, but some of them looked different as they offered Mopar blue, red, or silver side stripes, and interior stitching. Of the 500 of them that went to the US, 320 had automatic transmission and 180 had manuals, while 255 had blue stripes, 115 had red stripes, and 130 had silver stripes. The Mopar logo was found on the front fascia, hood pin caps, rear windows, and the chrome fuel door. The Mopar 10 also got a black chrome grille, 20 inch forged heritage gloss black wheels, a hood pin kit, and a TA style hood that I don't recall them ever using on any other modern factory vehicle. Under the hood is the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 with a unique engine cover with blue lettering. The automatics were good for 372 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque, while the six speeds had 376 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. Mopar did claim that this car had 10 to 15 more horsepower than that, thanks to a Mopar cold air intake and the TA hood scoop combination. Dodge claimed a 0 to 60 in around 5 seconds and the quarter mile in 13.5 seconds. Other additions included front and rear Mopar strut tower braces to improve cornering, and the Super Track Pack suspension, which added bigger sway bars, stiffer bushings, and firmer springs and shocks. They didn't forget about the interior, with beautiful catskin leather seats with Mopar 10 labeling, and stitching that matches the car's exterior side stripe. Mopar would add a leather wrap steering wheel, and you would get a T-handle shifter with the automatic, and a pistol grip shifter for the manuals. On the passenger side, you can find the serialized dash plaque with your production number on it. Other extras included a special owner's kit with certificate of your VIN, date of build, build number, Mopar 10 car cover, special edition book, and limited edition sketch of the vehicle that was signed by the chief designer. So while these Mopar 10s didn't add much performance-wise, it was unique enough and hard to find, so collectors love them and they still fetch some decent money used. Next are the 2023 Shakedown Buzz models from Dodge's Last Call campaign. Yes, there were 1,000 made, so that wouldn't have made the list, but just 500 per each trim, so they both qualify to make the list with that. So Dodge is building 500 in RT Scat Pack form in Destroyer Grey only, and the other 500 are RT Scat Pack wide bodies in Pitch Black. As for the unique features of the Shakedown specifically, these models include the Mopar Shaker hood and intake, Shaker decal under the hood, Shakedown spoiler graphic and stripe with red accent, and red 392 fender graphics. Both vehicles get the 6.4 liter or 392 Hemi V8 with 485 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque, and a 0-60 to 60 of around 4.2 seconds with the quarter mile time of around 12.3 seconds. Shakedowns also get a black Challenger badge and unique RT grill badge. As for the wheels, the regular body scat packs get 20 by 9.5 inch low gloss black slingshot wheels, while the wide body gets 20 by 11 inch carbon black warp speed wheels. Either model gets red six piston Brembos beneath them. Inside, the features continue with premium black Napa Alcantara seats with red stitching, demonic red seat belts, a shakedown instrument panel badge, and red stitching on the instrument panel, console, steering wheel, and seats. Next up, we have the 2013 SRT8 Core. 
So Dodge tried something in the early 2010s where they chose to go back to the basics by offering a car with less features, but all the same power. Dodge started this with the 2012 Charger Super B, and that continued for the 2013 and 2014 model years with the 300 and Challenger SRT8 core models. So for 2013 specifically, only 459 Challenger SRT8 cores were produced. These stripped down some of the luxury and convenience features, putting the price at $39,485, so it's a substantial $5,200 less than what the SRT8 cost. Of course, the performance will be identical with the 6.4 liter Hemi V8 with 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque, and a 5-speed auto or 6-speed manual. So let's go over what standard equipment you lose for that $5,200 less. The core loses the automatic HID headlights, fog lights, manual folding power heated mirrors, and dual racing stripes. It also looks different with a black grille instead of satin chrome, 20 inch cast aluminum wheels instead of 20 inch forged aluminum wheels, a standard hood, a black 392 plane badge instead of the 392 Hemi fender badge, black Brembo calipers instead of red, and a fixed suspension instead of the three mode adapting version. Inside the changes are even more noticeable, as you get cloth bucket seats instead of Napa leather, there's no heated front seats or leather wrapped steering wheel, there's a basic ancient radio from the first gen that has four speakers, instead of the 6.5 inch Uconnect 430 touchscreen and six speaker Boston acoustics audio system with amplifier, and you also miss out on the sunroof, park sense system, USB ports, security alarm, temperature, compass, and tire pressure display. Normally just colors alone are not limited enough to make this list, but the one exception I found was the 2013 Tour Red Challenger models. This color has been made sporadically over the years, but in 2013, Dodge made just 377 Tour Red Challengers in total, some of them RTs and some SRT8s. So that was an interesting one, and these are definitely hard to find. Another interesting one to make this list is in the 7th spot, the 2020 Hellcat Red Eye non-wide body. 2020 was a slower year for sales for auto manufacturers across the board due to COVID, and Dodge only sold 3,656 Hellcat Challengers in total for the year. The Red Eye without the wide body was responsible for just 358 sales, so that makes it the fewest of all the Hellcat variants of any year since 2015, not including the Superstock. 348 of those went to the US, 4 to Canada, and 6 were exported. Hell Raisin, F8 Green, Cinnamon Stick, and Go Mango all just had 12 cars of each. The Red Eye was introduced for the Challenger to essentially fill the void of the Demon, since it was a one-off, and it uses basically the same engine, the supercharged high output version of the 6.2 liter Hemi V8, rated for 797 horsepower and 707 pound-feet of torque, which was an increase of 90 horsepower and 57 pound-feet of torque over a standard Hellcat engine at the time. Without the wide body, the Red Eye comes with the 20 by 9.5 inch lightweight wheels. The Red Eye also has 25 major component upgrades over a Hellcat, including a 2.7 liter supercharger versus the 2.4 liter, 14.5 pounds of boost compared to 11.6, 6,500 RPM rev limit versus 6,200 RPM, two dual stage fuel pumps instead of one, strengthened connecting rods and pistons, a high speed valve train, fuel injection system upgrade, and improved lubrication system among lots more. There's also track focus features like the SRT power chiller, after run chiller, and torque reserve. One of the most sought after last call models would end up being the Black Ghost Challenger, limited to only 300 units produced for 2023. This car is meant to pay homage to the original Black Ghost, a 1970 Dodge Challenger with both the RT and the SE packages and the 426 Hemi engine. This was a legendary car in the Detroit street racing scene, known to spontaneously appear, destroy the competition, and leave without a trace. The owner was Godfrey Qualls, but he was a Detroit police officer and former paratrooper in the Army's 82nd Airborne Division, so he had to keep his street racing a secret to uphold his reputation. The legend would grow over time, and eventually a documentary was made on the whole thing. Qualls unfortunately passed away from prostate cancer in December 2015, but he passed this car down to his son Gregory. The car is fully original in terms of appearance, with the original black paint, gator skin roof, African flags on the fenders, and white stripe across the rear end, and it had just around 46,000 miles on it. The 2023 version pays homage to that car, and it gets based on the Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Widebody, so it has the 6.2 liter high output supercharged Hemi V8 engine under the hood, with 807 horsepower and 717 pound-feet of torque. 0 to 60 times for this model are around 3.5 seconds, with the quarter mile around 11 seconds. It also has a 3.09 to 1 rear axle ratio. 
To fit better with the wider body, Dodge added 20 by 11 inch satin carbon warp speed wheels with paint matching black six piston Brembos beneath them. Dodge has also added white rear fender graphics and of course a black gator skin roof vinyl to try to mimic the original black ghost. The front fascia gets bright Dodge lettering along with the Challenger script grill, fender and spoiler badges. The SRT badge is finished in midnight metallic. Mopar also added a hood pin kit and bright fuel filler door for a retro touch. The interior gets Laguna leather and Alcantara seats, and that continues to the door bolsters. Other features include real carbon fiber bezels and a dynamic suede headliner. It was nice that Dodge uncovered a really cool story that many people might have not known about with this Challenger. Despite all the flashy 2023 last call models, the rarest 2023 model ends up being the Mopar 23 Challenger, which is 5th on this list. Mopar is only making 220 of these, 200 for the US and 20 for Canada, and they're based on the RT Scat Pack widebody vehicles. The Mopar 23 version has an MSRP of $61,255, so it's roughly $3,995 for this package on top of the Scat Pack widebody. The Mopar 23 is finished in pitch black clear coat with matte black graphics and a Mopar blue tracer stripe on the hood, roof, and deck lid. There's also a Mopar blue grill badge and calipers, Mopar valve stem caps, and an all-new carbon fiber deck lid spoiler. The wide body allows it to have 20 by 11 inch forged aluminum carbon black wheels. Dodge did add several packages here to differentiate these from a regular scat pack wide body, like the $1,595 carbon suede interior package, $2,985 plus group, and $475 Mopar interior appearance group. There isn't a performance improvement, just the 6.4 liter Hemi V8 with 485 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque, and the Torque Flight 8-speed auto. All the Mopar 23s will have a serialized Mopar instrument panel badge, and each buyer gets an owner's kit with a metal certificate of authenticity, with a serialized vehicle build number, and a special rendering of the vehicle by the Mopar design team. An interesting one on the list comes in at number 4, the SRT Superstock, the best performing trim level that was offered for the Challenger other than the Demon. If we look at the production chart, this trim level has been produced in very limited quantities, and pretty much any year could make this list, but the 2020 version is certainly the rarest, with just 192 produced, 190 for the US, and 2 for Canada. Here's the production chart by color, where triple nickel was the most limited. Back in 2020, the Superstock MSRP was $79,595. This was meant to be a track and performance focused version of a Hellcat, so I would think it's so rare because you have to be a true Dodge enthusiast and fan to go out of your way to get a Superstock. They come in wide body only and have the same 6.2 liter supercharged V8 engine and 8 speed auto as the Red Eye, adding 10 horsepower to 807 with between 707 to 717 pound feet of torque. The Superstock is able to hit 0 to 60 in 3.25 seconds and the quarter mile in 10.5 seconds at 131 miles an hour. This car gets lightweight 18 by 11 inch low gloss granite wheels with 31540 R18 Nitto NT05R drag radials, which are the same tires found on the Demon. The six piston Brembos and 15.4 inch front rotors on the Hellcats have been replaced with lighter four piston black painted calipers and smaller 14.2 inch discs. The Bilstein Adaptive Damping Suspension has been tuned for drag racing to shift as much weight as possible to the rear tires when the car is launching, and there's a new track mode. Other standard SRT race options include line lock, launch control, power chiller, race cooldown, and torque reserve all standard. The interior comes with houndstooth cloth seat standard, which can be upgraded to Laguna leather or deleted for weight savings for just a dollar. Third on this list is the Mopar 17 edition. This was the 8th special edition Mopar vehicle to celebrate the 80th anniversary of Mopar, so that's why they made just 80 copies of this version with two different paint schemes, pitch black with contusion blue and pitch black with billet silver, so with 80 of each there's a total of 160 available, starting at $57,885. This time around the base used was a 2017 Challenger RT Scat Pack 392 Shaker. The starting price for one of these came at $57,885, which was around 10,000 more than the non-exclusive model. The 392 Hemi under the hood is the same as the other ones that we've been over, but these ones are paired with a six-speed manual transmission. Mopar added a cold air intake, strut tower braces, and the air catcher duct system from the Hellcats, with the inside driver's side headlight having an air inlet. For these cars, the roof was hand-painted black for the two-tone look, the hood and rear decklet spoiler were blacked out, they added a Mopar design badge and black Hellcat exhaust tips, and the 392 emblem was painted by hand on the fenders. 
The wheels were 20 by 9 inches with Dodge center caps. There's another awesome feature under the hood, which is an 80th anniversary plaque that tells you which version you have out of 80. Inside the cabin, the only features are silver Mopar logos that are embroidered into the seats, and the same silver stitching on the doors and other interior panels. Each customer also got an extensive Mopar 17 owner's kit that included a leather case with Mopar valve stem caps, keychains, a welcome letter, hand-signed rendering of the car from FCA's design office, an info booklet, anniversary badge, acrylic design piece, and vehicle's birth certificate that was engraved on a metal plate that told you lots of vehicle specs, the date it was manufactured, and the vehicle number again. Second on the list is yet another Mopar edition, the 2014 Ultra Rare Mopar 14. They intended to make just 100 of these, but the final total was 111, so there's 60 units in pitch black and another 51 in bright white, with around 100 of those going to the US. All Mopar 14 sold out in just one day with an MSRP of $40,490. This time around, the Mopar 14 is based on the RT Shaker. So it still had the same 5.7 liter Hemi to the Mopar 10, with the same performance that we went over, offered again in both the 5-speed auto and 6-speed manual. So ultimately, this was a dressed up RT and marked the return of the awesome Shaker hood with a Shaker stripe that went along the hood, roof, and trunk. Mopar added two options a rocker panel body side triple stripe with a Mopar logo across the doors, or an A-line body side stripe that wraps over the deck lid and has a Mopar logo on the rear quarter panel. The car also got 20 by 8 inch gloss black wheels with Mopar center caps, black vapor grill surround, black fuel filler door, gloss black deck lid spoiler, Mopar quarter glass decals, and gloss black Mopar design badges. The interior got some upgrades too, with a dark slate color, Performance front seats with premium black Napa leather, Mopar blue accent threading, the Mopar logo is embossed into the back of the seat, and a pistol grip shifter and three-spoke leather wrap performance steering wheel to complete the package. All owners got an interior plaque with your serial number, Mopar branded key fobs, and a huge custom owner's kit. Buyers could also add Mopar custom shop items upon purchase, so each Mopar 14 could potentially be slightly different from each other. The top of the list, the rarest challenger of all, is the Mopar 19 edition. Dodge made just 90 units for the US and 10 for Canada for a total of only 100. I don't have the color breakdown numbers, but it was offered in either pitch black or white knuckle. Based on the RT scat pack, these had an MSRP of $45,835. They were very beautiful cars with a black shaker hood, black hood pins, unique Mopar blue shakedown graphics, and a unique Mopar design badge. The Mopar 19 sits on 20 by 9 inch forged aluminum wheels with Mopar branded center caps and valve stem caps and red Brembo 4 piston calipers. Under the hood is the 392 Hemi engine, so nothing new from the other versions on this list. Again, Mopar has added their cold air intake and front and rear strut tower braces. Disappointingly, in my opinion, these rare Mopar 19s have performance cloth seats with a two tone Mopar logo embroidered into the seat backs. Like the others, there's a Mopar 19 badge on the passenger side, and they also added premium floor mats and Challenger polished sill guards. Vehicles were delivered with an owner's kit with a full color booklet, keepsakes, and renderings of the vehicle. Now, before we end the video, here are some honorable mentions that just missed the cut. First, there's the 2023 Swinger Buzz models from Dodge's last call campaign, with 1,000 made in total, but they were divided up into F8 green, Sublime green, and white knuckle colors, so some will be rarer than others and might have made the list. Others that just missed would be the two 2011 SRT8 inaugural editions with two different versions, deep water blue with stone white stripes and bright white clear coat with viper blue stripes. Actual production numbers saw 863 of the blues and 731 of the whites that were produced. Dodge has the highest percentage of active military buyers in the industry, so they made the 2019 Stars and Stripes Edition Challenger in either GT rear-wheel drive, RT or RT scat pack, available in nine different colors. I couldn't find total production for this one, but you never ever see them, so I suspect they're super rare. I have seen one comment saying they made just 137 scat pack versions, but I cannot confirm this. Another near miss was the 2017 SRT392, with 831 produced. And the final other group I considered putting on was the 2020 50th anniversary editions. As you can see from the chart, for each of the trims, there were only supposed to be 490 produced, with 280 per color. But that's a total of 1,960, which just isn't rare enough to make the list, and most of the models are almost the same. It's also worth mentioning that Dodge Canada released another 70 models of the Scat Pack Shaker 50th Anniversary. 
Those models celebrated 50 years of the Challenger as it arrived in the fall of 1969 for the 1970 model year. So that's it for this video on the top 10 rare Dodge Challengers. Hopefully you enjoyed it and let me know if you own or have ever owned one of these beautiful cars on the list. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content and I'll see you in the next video.